Carry out the following safety precautions before starting with the dismantling activities. Switch off lube oil system. Close starting air valve. Open the indicator cocks. Engage the turning gear device. When exchanging a camshaft section, the following engine parts should be removed. Camshaft door. Valve rocker arm bracket. Starting air distributor. Also needed are the following tools which are delivered standard with the engine. Begin with opening the camshaft space of the relevant cylinder. After that, the fuel cam is being turned into top position of the compression stroke, so that the fuel roller is lifted as far as possible in order to block it. For this purpose, the distance piece of the locking pin needs to be removed. By removing the locking pin, the distance piece can be taken out. After that, the locking pin is fitted again. Now the guide bush of the fuel roller has to be lifted, with a crowbar for instance. The locking pin has to be tightened completely. As a result, the fuel roller becomes free from the fuel cam. In order to lift the inlet and exhaust roller too, the push rods need to be removed. For that purpose, also remove the valve rocker arm support. Check if the inlet and exhaust rollers are on the base circle of the cams. Loosen all six fastening bolts of the rocker arm bracket. Remove the bolts and place a M16 eye bolt or a hoisting plate in the provided threaded hole on top of the rocker arm support. Subsequently lift the rocker arm support from the cylinder head. Then remove the push rods one by one. Turn the engine in scavenging top position. In this position, it is easy to mount the locking strip to the guide bushes, which keeps the inlet, as well as the exhaust roller, in an upper position so that these rollers become free from the cams too. Remove all socket head screws of both flanges, except for one on each side. This is the bracket for dismantling and mounting the camshaft section. Place the bracket under the camshaft and fasten it by means of two bolts to the engine block. Tighten the adjusting bolt so that the bracket is pushed against the shaft. Now turn back the two remaining bolts 8mm from the flange. This is the exact tolerance to pull the shaft out of the dowel pinholes.
In order to slide the camshaft, the starting air distributor needs to be removed. First, take away the protecting plates at vibration damper side. Behind this, you will find the starting air distributor. Remove all pilot airlines and the air supply line. Mark them in respect to each other to avoid mistakes during mounting and keep the pipes clean. Now the air distributor can be taken away. If necessary, the distributor can be pressed off the dowel pins with a plastic hammer at the inside of the camshaft space. Remove the camshaft cover of the vibration damper space to disassemble the starting air distributing shaft. Finally, remove the intermediate disc to place the camshaft extractor. This is the camshaft extractor. Install the extractor over the last journal of the camshaft. By tightening both bolts, it is now possible to move up the complete camshaft. As a result, the centering rim and the dowel pins are pulled out of the shaft journals. As soon as the dowel pins are free, the last two bolts can be removed so that the camshaft section rests on the bracket. Now the camshaft section can be rolled outside over the bracket. With a lifting device, the camshaft section can be hoisted away from the bracket. When inspecting the camshaft bearing, the bolts in the other compartment have to be loosened too. After which, on this side, one can remove the shaft journal from the centering rim and the dowel pin using the extractor. The frozen in dowel pin is, in every camshaft section, located in the same position. The dowel pinhole in the journal determines the right position of the camshaft section. Watch out for damage to the centering rim and the dowel pin while rolling in. Then turn the shaft in the correct position so that the dowel pin can be fixed in the pinhole of the journal. Remove the camshaft extractor. 
The bolts are delivered with a locking glue, so always use new bolts when mounting. First, fit all bolts by hand as far as possible. Then turn with a spanner the journal against the flange of the camshaft section. Mind, while doing this, the alignment of the dowel pin. Then all the bolts have to be tightened at the specified torque. Before turning the engine, remove the bracket. Subsequently, lower down the inlet and exhaust roller by removing the locking strip from the guide bushes. Then turn the fuel cam in top position of the compression stroke in order to be able to remove the locking pin. Before the locking pin can be removed totally, the pressure of the spring in the fuel pump has to be intercepted to prevent damage to the guide bush. Mount the distance piece again. Subsequently, fit the locking pin back again. Check that no loose parts or tools are left behind before closing the camshaft space. Check both push rods for damage and mount them with the venting hole pointed upwards. Clean both pivots of the valve rocker arms. Check them also for damage and oil them with clean lubricating oil. When mounting the rocker arm support, the joint faces need to be dry and clean. The rocker arm support is being positioned with two dowel pins in the cylinder head. Clean and fit the bolts and tighten all six bolts with a spanner. Then, tighten the bolts in accordance with the procedure in the instruction manual to the right torque. Always check the valve clearance first, before mounting the valve cover. Mounting of the starting air distributor can be started by first fitting the intermediate disc to the shaft journal. And then tighten the four bolts at the right torque which is mentioned in the instruction manual. The dowel pin in the intermediate disc positions the starting air distributing shaft. This shaft is also tightened by four bolts to a specified torque. This torque is mentioned in the instruction manual. 
Check if no loose parts or tools are left behind in this part of the camshaft space and replace the cover. Then thoroughly clean the built-on surface of the starting air distributor. Check for damage and use the prescribed liquid seal on the surface. Now place the distributor, which is positioned by means of two dowel pins. Tighten the distributor and connect all pipes. Blow compressed air through the pipes in order to prevent pollution of the system. When all pipes are connected, the protecting plates can be remounted again. Before starting the engine, carry out a lube oil inspection on the parts that have been dismantled. This is a demonstration video of the inspection and overhaul procedures of a W38 cylinder head. The exact data and procedures are defined in the instruction manual. Always remember during handling that the weight of the cylinder head is approximately 700 kilograms. Take care of the necessary precautions when working with liquid nitrogen. Lifting tool and protecting ring for the cylinder head. Before placing the protecting ring, remove first the O-ring. The protecting ring protects the injector nozzle and gas sealing surface of the cylinder head. Remove lifting tool. Before removing the injector, you have to remove the locking plate and connecting piece of the high-pressure fuel line. Turn off the nuts of the injector and remove distance pieces and gland. To remove the nozzle holder, you can use a lifting extracting device as shown. First, place the support of the hydraulic jack. Next, place the jack with the connector upwards. To remove the nozzle holder in a controlled way, use the hydraulic pump. Observe the pressure during this procedure. If the injector is loose, the pressure will decrease. Remove all the special tools.
Turn in the threaded lifting end again and remove the injector by hand. For removal of bracket with rocker arms, make sure that the six M20 bolts are loose. Use an M16 eye bolt to lift the bracket. Both bridge pieces are identical. Mark these pieces as well as the pivots so they can be placed back in the same position. Before removal of the valves, the protecting ring has to be removed. Place the cylinder head on a wooden plate. These are the tools to remove the valves. Place the tool on top of the spring discs and place the distance pieces around the injector studs and lock them with the nuts. Use the proper adapter rings. This depends on the valve rotator execution. Carefully compress the springs with the hydraulic device. If the rotators stay in position, bring them down with a plastic hammer. Remove the valve cotters, keep them pair by pair. Release the pressure slowly and check that there is no tension on the springs. Remove the tools. Remove discs, rotators and springs. Mark all parts for remounting into the same position when they are in good condition. Remove the lower part of the rotator with a hook spanner. Remove the steel disc. Lift the cylinder head. Push down the valves by hand if they stick due to the O-ring in the valve guide. Remove guide blocks of the bridge pieces. Overturn the cylinder head to one side in order to remove injector sleeve and valve guides. These are the tools for dismounting and mounting the injector sleeve. Bring in the pulling piece at bottom side. Place the support ring. Install and lock the jack. Hydraulically jack the sleeve out of the cylinder head. Observe the pressure during this operation.
Remove all the tools. Remove the sleeve. In order to prevent damaging the exhaust valve temperature sensor and pocket, remove the sensors before removal of the valve seats. Turn the cylinder head upside down. This can be done with the lifting tool still in place. A special tilting block can be ordered to handle the cylinder head in an easier way. There are several ways to remove the frozen in valve seats. In this video film, the welding method is demonstrated. To protect the gas sealing surface from weld spatters, etc., it has to be protected by, for instance, grease. These tools are needed to remove the seats. Place a threaded end with a suitable steel disc in the seat. The disc should be positioned sufficiently deep. Now weld the disc firmly into the exhaust valve seat. During cooling down, the disc will shrink. The seat can now be hydraulically removed. Place the support in such a way that the recess is above the gas sealing surface. The inlet valve seat can be removed in the same way. Due to the bigger inner diameter of the inlet valve seat, a bigger disc is needed. Measure the inner diameter of the valve guides. Always first calibrate the measuring tool. In case the diameter is out of limit, the guides can be removed in the following way. Remove O-ring. Now remove the circlip. These tools have to be used to remove the valve guides. Bring in the pulling piece at the bottom side. Place the aluminium support and jack. Hydraulically jack out the guide. Observe the pressure. Remove the tools and guide. Before assembling, the parts have to be cleaned thoroughly. Before freezing in the injector sleeve, the upper and lower contact surfaces in the cylinder head have to be cleaned, degreased and applied with a prescribed Loctite.
liquid nitrogen is used to cool down the injector sleeve, the valve guides and the inlet valves. Working with liquid nitrogen can be dangerous. Take the necessary safety precautions. Use the special tools for mounting the cool down injector sleeve. Keep the sleeve hydraulically pressurized until it has reached the ambient temperature. The valve guides also will be frozen in. In order to position the guides in the right height, a circlip is used, which fits in a groove. Cool down the guides in liquid nitrogen. Keep the guides submerged, at least until the bubbling has stopped. Place the guide in the degreased and cleaned hole. Clean and degrease the contact surface in the cylinder head of the inlet valve seats. Place the inlet valve seat. To ensure that the valve seat is in the correct position, use a valve. Check with a feeler gauge if the valve seat is completely in contact with the contact surfaces. The exhaust valve seat has an O-ring sealing. It is not allowed to cool the seat lower than minus 30 degrees centigrade. Otherwise, the O-ring will harden and break. It is recommended to heat up the cylinder head in an oven or in water to get a sufficient difference in temperature for mounting the seat. Apply the prescribed Loctite only on the biggest vertical contact surface. Use silicone grease to lubricate the O-ring and fit the ring around the cooled seat. Press in the exhaust valve seat using a valve. The Chris Marine seat grinding tool has a very accurate factory set grinding angle. Since the angle of the seat and valve are not identical, it is not allowed to lap valve and seat. Always use the instruction manual delivered with the valve seat grinding tool. Use the special hand tool to make a small conical rim in the valve guide. Lower the valve seat grinding machine. Be sure that the correct spindle is used in the valve guide. Fit the tightening nut and tighten it by hand. Connect the air hose. Connect the air supply hose to the air conditioning unit. The air pressure should be between 6 and 9 bar. Mind the direction of the airflow. Adjust the lubricating oil supply with the adjusting screw. 
Fit the grinding stone in the chuck of the machine with two spanners. Always smooth new stones to get a flat surface. Set the marking on the angle plate so that it is right between the two boundary lines. Be sure that the grinding angle is on the correct presetted value. Lower the grinding machine over the seat surface so that the grinding stone is approximately above its centre. The stone should just touch the seat surface lightly. Bring the stone in the initial position for grinding. This is on the inner side of the valve seat. Tighten the lock nut on the shifting handle. Move the sleeve to the up position and start the engine. Start the rotary driven engine and engage rotation by turning and lowering the lock ring. One notch on the fine adjustment knob will feed down the grinding stone 0.1 millimeters. Normally the feeding of the stone is 0.2, 0.3 millimetres for fine grinding. On delivery the grinding angle is set for the relevant engine type, so it is not necessary to readjust. If several times are required to grind the valve seat, feed down a further grinding depth on the fine adjustment knob. Move the sleeve to the down position and start the rotary driven engine. If the surface seems completely smooth, bring four marks on the surface with a felt marker. The last time always grind from the inside to the outside without giving a further feed down. If an extra fine surface is required, a little oil can be dropped onto the seat surface. Oil from the oil mist lubricator unit also gives the same result. Apply a little drop of oil on the valve seat surface. If the felt pen marks are completely removed, the surface is correct. Check with a very thin layer of Prussian blue the contact area between valve and seat. Press down the valve on the seat. Do not turn it. Inspect the contact area. This should be over the entire outside circumference. The width of the blue marking should not be more than approximately 20%. After the seat is ground, Check if the seat dimensions are still within the no-go criteria. See your engine manual. Remove the holding plate. Pull out the starting air valve. If this valve sticks in the cylinder head, use a plastic hammer to loosen it. Disassemble the valve. Clean all components and check the seat condition of valve and valve housing. If necessary, lap the seats by hand. Keep the piston on the valve spindle mounted for guiding during grinding. Use the prescribed torque for the self-locking spindle nut. Renew the O-ring and lubricate it with silicone grease. Use a new copper ring and keep this one in place by means of high temperature grease. Mount the valve with the venting hole downwards. Tighten the bolts to the right torque setting as mentioned in the manual. Clean the thread on sensor pocket and in the cylinder head. Apply Loctite on the sensor pocket thread for sealing. Use high temperature grease on the thread of the sensor. Do not bend the sensor line in a smaller radius than 20 degrees. Use new O-rings in the valve guides and lubricate them well.
Check manually the condition of the valve rotator mechanism. Turn the lower part of the valve rotators on the valve guides of the exhaust valves. Use a hook spanner. The dimensions of the in and exhaust valves are the same. Valves differ in materials and must not be mixed. You can clearly identify the valves in the following way. Inlet valve has a recess in the valve disc and the valves have a notation at the valve stem top. Clean and lubricate the valves and guides. To keep the valves in position during turning of the cylinder head, for instance, tie wraps can be used. In general, the code numbers on the springs are in top position. Clean and lubricate the valve rotators. Check manually and visually the condition of the rotators. Check the helical grooves to make sure they are undamaged. Place the special tools and hydraulically press down the springs. Guide the upper part of the valve rotator carefully in the bottom drive unit. Clamp the valve cotters around the stem and take care that the gaps on each side are equal. Place the bridge piece guide blocks. Lubricate all parts and place the bridge pieces. Align the bridge piece and guide block. Check the clearance with a feeler gauge. Tighten the Allen bolts to the prescribed torque. In order to obtain the same clearance for each valve, the bridge piece has to be adjusted in the following way. Be sure the adjusting bolt is turned down, no clearance. Keep pressure on the bridge piece at adjusting bolt side. Turn adjusting bolt counterclockwise. Stop turning when the pointer stops moving. Adjust now the dial gauge at zero. Press down the opposite side of the bridge piece and turn the adjusting bolt clockwise until it touches the valve stem. 
Press down again the adjusting bolt side and level the clearance by means of the adjusting bolt. The following procedure is another method to adjust the bridge piece position and can be used if no dial gauge is available. After the adjustment, tighten the lock nut at the torque mentioned in the manual. Take care that during the tightening, the adjusting bolt stays in the same position. Clean and lubricate the pivots. To inspect the bearing bushes of the rocker arms, the shaft has to be removed. The shaft can only be mounted in one position due to the eccentric holes of the bracket bolts. The mark on the frozen in bearing bush should correspond with the mark on the rocker arm. Carefully inspect the surface of the shaft for wear. These pins locate the rocker arm bracket on the cylinder head and should be undamaged. Clean the lubricating oil supply hole. Inspect the surface of the bracket before mounting. Tighten the bolts crosswise to the prescribed torque. Before the injector can be mounted, the protecting ring has to be placed. The injector sleeve can be cleaned by means of this tool. The sealing surface must be in good condition, since no sealing ring is used between injector and sleeve. Fit new O-rings and lubricate these rings with silicone grease. The injector can be placed now using the threaded rod. Be sure the locating pin fits into the recess. Place the gland, distance bushes and nuts. Do not yet tighten the nuts. Mount the high pressure connecting piece. Tighten this pipe to the prescribed torque. Mount the sealing gland and flange with new O-rings and Teflon sealing ring. Do not yet tighten the bolts. In order to prevent misalignment and leaking of the high pressure fuel line, the nuts and bolts have to be tightened on the engine. See the instruction manual for the right procedure. Finally, place the cover. These tools are needed to test and overhaul a fuel injector. 
Always check the injector before overhaul to determine the performance of the injector during previous operation. Test the injector on fuel spray pattern and opening pressure before the injector is disassembled. Utmost care must be used when testing a fuel injector. The fuel spray is powerful and may penetrate directly the skin. Immediately rinse the affected part of the body with lukewarm water for a long time and see a specialist. Release the nozzle spring tension first. Remove the nozzle from the holder by turning off the sleeve nut. Use the special socket. Remove adjusting spindle, guiding rod, spring and push rod. Clean all the parts in clean fuel oil, white spirit or similar to soak carbon. Inspect all the parts and sealing surfaces carefully. Use a new o-ring on the adjusting spindle. Assemble all the parts in reverse order. Take care that the locating pin fits in the groove of the guiding rod. Remove the preservation layer of the nozzle in clean fuel and check the free movement of the needle. Remember, never mix up nozzle parts. Use Molly Coat G between the contact surfaces of the sleeve nut and nozzle and in the thread. Tighten the sleeve nut to the correct torque. In case the injector is stored as a spare part for a longer period, it is recommended to use calibration fluid instead of fuel to prevent corrosion. On the test pump, the opening's pressure is adjusted by means of the setting of the right spring tension. Observe the pressure on the manometer when the nozzle opens. Check the spray pattern on a dry sheet of paper. Give the pump one quick stroke. The pattern should be uniform. Check the needle seat tightness. Dry first the nozzle tip. Increase the pressure just below openings pressure and keep it there for 10 seconds. Release the pressure. Check that there are no fuel drops on the tip. Check the tightness of the needle in the housing. Raise the pressure just below the opening's pressure. Measure the time for a pressure fall of 200 bar. This time is an indication for the wear of the needle in the housing.
This is a demonstration video of the inspection and testing procedures of a W38 fuel pump. The exact data and procedures are defined in the instruction manual. Plungers, elements and valves are matched and must be kept together during overhaul. This is an overview of the tools which are needed to disassemble and assemble a high pressure fuel pump. Utmost cleanliness should be taken into account during the whole procedure. Unlock the nuts and remove the nuts and locking plate. Remove the guide block assembly. Mount the disassembly tool and compress the heavy spring till the circlip is free. Carefully remove the circlip with pliers. Release the pressure off the spring by turning the spindle completely out. Now the assembly of spring disc, spring and plunger can be taken out. Remove the control sleeve with spring disc. This can only be done while the sleeve is in center position. Remember, plungers and elements are matched and must be kept together during overhaul. Turn the pump over into the normal vertical position. Remove tap bolts crosswise in steps of 30 degrees. Remove the cover with constant pressure valve carefully. Remove the discharge valve with spring and the spring of the constant pressure valve. Now remove carefully the liner out of the pump house by applying slight force. The element might stick due to the gluing effect of the O-rings. Remove the special sealing ring out of the pump house. Remove the tap bolt of the pneumatic stop cylinder housing. Remove the cylinder housing with piston. Remove the tap bolt and pressure plate. Now the plug can be removed using a bolt. The fuel rack is now free and can be pulled out. All O-rings and sealing rings must be renewed. For this reason, Storquart Silla Diesel supplies a complete overhaul kit. Wash all parts in clean fuel and keep the plunger and liner as a set. Check the condition of all parts, especially the running surface of plunger and liner element. Lubricate the internal parts with clean engine oil. During handling of the injection equipment components, keep your hands clean and greased with oil. Avoid touching the plunger running surface with bare fingers. Reinstall the discharge valve and constant pressure valve with their springs. Some grease may be used to keep the valves in position during assembly. Bolt the liner element to the cover. Note that the cover fits properly over the locating pin. Fit a new sealing ring in the pump housing. Mind the direction of this ring. Fit a new O-ring in the groove of the housing. Fit new O-rings with silicone grease around the liner element.
Lift the assembly into position in the pump housing with the recess in the cover over the locating pin. Tighten first the bigger inner bolts crosswise in three steps to nominal torque and then the smaller outer bolts in the same way. Lubricate and mount the control rack. Fit the plug with a new O-ring. Place the circlip. Mount the stop cylinder assembly. Check that the O-ring on the piston is in good condition. Turn the pump upside down and bring the control rack in centre position so the two markings are visible. Install the control sleeve in such a way that the pin at the serration fits exactly between the two markings on the control rack. Mount the components in reverse order. Check the running surface of the plunger for cavitation, grooves and wear. Use the mark on the plunger to line the plunger up with the corresponding mark on the control sleeve. Mount the push rod with the spring ring into the upper spring disc. Place the assembly tool and compress the spring. During this procedure, the veins of the plunger have to slide into the grooves of the control sleeve. To facilitate this, move the control rack to and fro at the same time. Place the circlip and release the pressure. Check that the lubricating oil holes and grooves in the guide block are open and clean. Place new O-rings with silicone grease. Renew the sealing assembly in the guide block. If this seal is leaking during engine operation, fuel can enter the lubricating oil system.
Install the guide block. Tighten the bolts and secure with the locking plate. 